As far as I'm aware, everyone thought Corey McKeague was single. He said so himself, and so did his mother. Then, on the 9th of January, April Oliver is introduced in the press as his pregnant girlfriend. Nicola Urquhart claimed this was because people were starting to notice. I would ask the question, who was starting to notice? Because there was no speculation um, in regard to any potential girlfriend um, at the time on social media. It was just assumed that Corrie was really single. This is an extract from an, an article uh, reproduced in the Daily Mail on the 9th of January where Nicola Urquhart um, gives her reasons for April Oliver coming forward to uh, reveal herself to the press. Um, it's something that somebody would normally want to keep quiet to make sure everything's okay but it's getting to the stage now where there are far too many people starting to notice and ask questions. Again, I would just repeat who was um, asking these questions. Mrs. Urquhart goes on to say that um, she would, uh, she, they're doing this uh, to let people know so that uh, we can draw a line under it so April can enjoy her pregnancy safely without any additional stress. And uh, the, con the contradiction here, of course, is that by revealing herself to the press, uh, she would uh, undergo intense scrutiny in the coming months. April continues in the article to say that um, I'm just doing anything I can not to add to the pressure I'm already under. Now, what kind of pressure does she think she's going to be under once she's um, revealed her pregnancy to the national press? It continues, uh, Miss Oliver said she had decided to speak about her pregnancy so that she could focus on looking after herself and her baby without any intrusion. Um, there's a considerable irony in this. And uh, she continues, it's hard and it's going to add another level of stress I don't really need, but it's something that has to be done. Now, think about that, something that has to be done. Really, why was any of that necessary? It's very hard to see that um, April Oliver gained any advantage by um, announcing her uh, pregnancy in the press, but one advantage that she did gain is that um, the public and the press were now aware of the name April Oliver. This introduction told the public that April Oliver actually existed. Is this article on the 9th of January a way of protecting April Oliver, of ensuring that she is protected in plain sight? Does this article lay the foundation for what was to come on the 19th of January when the Fab Swingers website profile was released to the press. On the 19th of January, the Daily Mail ran the article on the, uh, the Fab Swingers uh, leak to, uh, to Reddit, and uh, the Mail said that Mr McKeague also opened a joint account on the partner swapping club with his 21-year-old girlfriend, April Oliver. This would suggest to me that Corey McKeague and April Oliver were involved in activities together um, in the sense that they would meet new people and uh, they would um, act, act out together as a couple. By extension, what I'm asking is, could April Oliver have also been involved in any activities with Mr McKeague which could have put him in danger or could have led to his disappearance? In that case, was April Oliver also in danger? As I said previously, the Fab Swingers account was known to Cory McKeague's family and to the police, but not to the public. On the 19th of January, it became known to the public. Who would benefit from this? Mrs Urquhart, in a Facebook post, goes on to say that um, what was far more important than a little embarrassment was that the police were informed immediately and given every ability to ensure this did not have anything to do with Corrie's disappearance, which they are still doing. I only hope they have had the time to carry out all investigations. Now, considering the, the um, criticism of the police at this time and, and uh, their efforts, is it possible that this article could have strategically been released to uh, perhaps put some pressure on the police to encourage them to look at the link between um, Corrie's Fab Swingers account 
and his disappearance, that this was something in, that in fact uh, Corrie's family would like to have investigated um, and they felt that the police weren't doing everything they should so that um, this article could actually be just a little prompt to the police to um, investigate uh, this situation further. So now, anyone involved in the Fab Swingers website or anyone who had connections with Corrie McKeague through the website realised that their activities were known to the public. This release also applied pressure on a person or persons of interest. For months, the police have been reluctant to reveal any details of their investigation into the Fab Swingers website and Corrie's ties with individuals on that site. The focus from the police has consistently been on a case of AWOL or misadventure um, linked to the, um, the bin lorry and the possibility that Mr McKeague accidentally got into the bin lorry, fell into the, uh, fell into the uh, bin and was deposited at a landfill site. However, that does not mean that Fab Swingers has not played a central role in their investigation. It just means that they don't want to talk about it publicly. Once again in the Daily Mail on the, uh, on the 10th of June, uh, Martin McKeague, who is Corrie McKeague's father, gave an interview where, where he stated that he hadn't previously been aware of Corrie's um, sexual interests and his um, swinging website. However, he did believe that um, S&M and partner swapping could hold the key to Corrie's disappearance. The article goes on to say that Suffolk Police were still looking into Corrie's lifestyle and background um, and this uh, was also playing a role in their inquiries despite an ongoing search at a landfill site where as yet nothing of significance has been recovered. Martin told Mail Online during an interview several avenues had been explored by the police but had not been reported in the public domain. It seems clear that all sides of Corey McKeague's family seem to agree uh, that his body is at the landfill site and that is why there has been a consistent effort to um, renew searches of, of that area. However, the question remains, how did his body come to be at the landfill site? Was it in fact taken there by a bin lorry in a, an accident or an act of misadventure or was it placed there by individuals who were responsible for his disappearance? The complicated and hostile relationship between Nicola Urquhart and Suffolk Police was discussed once again in the Daily Mail in July, uh, where Nicola, uh, on her Facebook post, claims she was informed over the family's tip line that someone had killed her son. We don't know when she received this information, but it was enough to drive her to petition the police to continue their search of the landfill site. She believes Corrie was killed and his body was placed in the landfill site. Suffolk Police has a different theory. Um, they suggest, suggest that he was known to sleep in rubbish bins and ended up there in a tragic accident. Here is an extract from the, the Daily Mail article in July. Obviously, it was crucial for Nicola Urquhart to uh, petition to continue the landfill search in the hope of finding a body. The discovery of Corey McKeague's body, or any traces of DNA, could then progress the investigation in the direction of a criminal investigation rather than a missing person case, uh, as is currently being investigated. However, um, Nicola contends that the police have been negligent in deciding to close down the search after a number of weeks without finding any evidence of Corey McKeague. Without this physical evidence, it would be very hard to pursue persons of interest and actually bring about a prosecution in this case. From the, uh, the Mail article, uh, Nicola revealed the dig started at, started at the site in Milton on the outskirts of Cambridge after a call to the reward hotline claiming Curry had been killed. That is the, uh, the family's uh, tip line for information on the case. 
uh, writing on the Fine Cory uh, Facebook site, Nicola said, someone claimed to me on a reward phone to have been told who killed Cory and put him in the landfill. The police know this and this is why they started looking at the process of the landfill and went on, went on to search the landfill, yet they are not exhausting all lines of inquiry by completing the search. My question would be, why is the police um, so determined at this point to close down the search? My interpretation of this article is that Nicola is suggesting the police know the identity of the individual who killed Corey and put him in the landfill and um, that is the reason for initiating the search of the landfill, not that the police suspect a body may be in the landfill. In the same article, in contrast to uh, Nicola's assumption, Detective Superintendent Katie Elliott of Suffolk Police said, Corrie had been known to sleep in rubbish. We've explored every other reasonable hypothesis and there is nothing to support any other explanation. So once again, you, you have the police just uh, reiterating the same, uh, the same comments and the same line of inquiry, which is that um, he fell asleep in an, in an industrial bin. So it's a, it's a case of misadventure from the perspective of uh, Suffolk Police. A review of Suffolk Police's handling of the McKeague investigation was conducted recently by East Midlands Operation Unit and it concluded that the police had explored all reasonable lines of inquiry. A spokesman for Suffolk Police said in October 2017, the report concludes that police have conducted a thorough, methodical and detailed investigation and explored all reasonable lines of inquiry with no new further leads needing to be pursued. The police once again stated that they believed Mr McKeague's body was likely to be found in the landfill site and therefore a new search of the landfill site began on October 23rd.